OK, so I recorded a video a few weeks ago on how to upgrade Windows 10 to Windows 11 on unsupported systems. And one of the things that many people said was, why should I upgrade to Windows 11? Because Windows 11 has got so many privacy concerns. I don't want my data getting sent back to Microsoft. So this video is going to show you a great little website that enables you to lock down your privacy in Windows 11. All the details coming up shortly. Don't forget to like this video, share it and subscribe to my channel. Doing these three things help us make more great videos for you. So this website here is really a Swiss army knife of privacy, cleanup tools, configure programs and basically just tweak your system. It's a collection of scripts that have been found all over the internet to do certain tasks. And what we can do is we can go into this disable OS data collection, which is the privacy part, and we can tick and untick the parts that we want and what we don't want. Say, for instance, here we wanted to disable application compatibility compatibility framework, we can tick that. And then what we can do is we can look through the list and see what else we want to tick. And then we can download a pre-compiled script, run it, or we can copy and paste it into PowerShell. And that will then enable us to, uh, to, to lock down the privacy of our PC. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the things I think you should really locked down, things that are not going to stop your system from working. Let's just untick that. So disable application compatibility framework. We really don't want to disable that because that could help us at some point install an app which might not be compatible with our system. It might be able to set it up so that it can be compatible with a system. So that's not a good thing really to disable. Disable Windows telemetry and data collection. Yes, disable that, put a tick in that box there. That's basically passing Windows data about how your system is performing. Disable Windows update data collection. Now, really, we don't want to turn that off because that will break driver updates. And it also stops you from downloading or your computer from downloading updates from other computers on your network and uh, makes it go out to the internet to get those updates. So therefore it kind of overloads your internet connection. Say if you've got 10 PCs on your network, say for instance, instead of going back out 10 times to get the data for each PC, what will happen is once one PC has got the update, for instance, it can then share that update with all other nine PCs, saving you time and data. So it's a good idea not to disable that. Disable app access to personal information. Now, if I click on the little arrow just pointing to the right there, that opens that up and gives you the individual options that we've got in here. So disable app access to your file system. Well, a lot of apps might need access to your documents, your pictures or your videos folder. Say, for instance, if it's a photograph app, then it's going to need access to your pictures folder to be able to save photographs in it or read the photographs that you've got in it. So probably best not to to muck around with that. Disable app access to voice activation just a bit further down there. Well, if you don't use voice activation at all in any way, shape or form, then by all means tick that. You can go into the little arrow there to expand upon that. But if you don't like voice activation at all, then yeah, by all means put a tick in that box. Disable app access to location. Well, certain apps might need to know your location. For instance, say, for instance, if you've installed Netflix, it might need to know where you are to be able to use the service so that it knows that you're in a country which does have the rights to use Netflix, for instance. The next one down, disable app access to account information, name and picture. Well, if you've got a Microsoft account attached to your PC, then it will pass on that information to a particular app if it's needed. If you really don't like having your Microsoft account attached to the PC, then have a look through my YouTube channel. I've got loads of videos which tell you how to detach your Microsoft account from your PC for Windows 10 and Windows 11. So really, as long as you do that, you shouldn't need to uh, tick that box there because, again, that could stop an app from working. Disable app access to motion data. Well, that there specifies whether Windows apps can access the movement of the user's heads, hand, hands, motion controllers and other tracked objects while the app is running in the background. So generally, if you use games on your PC and you use a motion controller or it needs to look at your head, your face, your hands, then uh, don't disable this. Disable app access to the phone. 
If you've got your phone connected to your PC, then the best thing to do is to detach it from the PC in the first place. So you shouldn't need to tick on that. Disable app access to trusted devices. Well, the way I see it is if you wouldn't want them to access trusted devices, they wouldn't be trusted devices. So ignore that. Disable app sync with devices, unpaired beacons, TVs, etc. So again, if you don't want a device or devices being able to access or sync with apps on your PC, then tick that box. But I would say if you're not really sure, then leave it unticked. You've then got disable app access to camera. So if you don't use a camera, then by all means tick that. Disable app access to microphone. Again, if you don't use a microphone, then tick that. And if you don't want your apps sharing and syncing information with non-paired devices, then again, tick this here. If you don't want apps sharing information about diagnostic information about other apps, then again, tick that box just there. If you don't want your apps to have access to your contacts, then again, you can tick that there. If you don't want an app to be able to access notifications on your system, then again, tick that there. If you don't feel that any of your apps need applica uh, need access to your calendar, then again there. If you don't feel that any of your apps need access to your call history, if you've got a call history, then tick that box there. And if you don't want any apps to have access to your emails, then again, tick that box there. And the same with tasks and messaging, SMS messaging or MS, MMS messaging. You've also got here an option to disable app access to radios. So if you know that none of your apps need access to control radios, then again, you can tick that there. And if none of your apps need access to Bluetooth, then again, tick that there. If your computer doesn't need to know whereabouts it is, which location it's in, then you can tick that there. Although sometimes location access is handy. If for instance, you have got the find my PC option on, or there's something on your system which enables you to find your PC in the event it's lost or stolen, then that might disable that. So probably a good idea not to uh, disable that unless you really know what you're doing. Disable Windows search data collection. Sounds a good idea to disable this, but if you use search to search for files, for folders, for photos, etc., on there, disabling that could actually stop you from being able to find files and folders, etc., on your PC using the search function. So I'm going to leave that off. Disable targeted advertisements and marketing. Yep, turn that on. That's not going to do your system any harm. It just means the adverts that you see will be less appealing to you. Disable biometrics. Now, if you use your face to log in or your fingerprint to log in, then don't disable this because it won't work. It will stop that from working. I haven't got that on my computer, so I'm going to tick that box. But if you have, leave that unticked. Disable Windows Insider Program, or if you're part of Windows Insider Program and you get updates before anybody else and you don't want to continue getting those updates, then tick that there. Disable Cloud Sync, that is associated with your Microsoft account. So if you log in with a Microsoft account instead of a local account, then that is going to sync a lot of information, information like your application data, your app sync, your credentials, your desktop themes, any personalization you've made, the start bar layout, web browser, Windows settings, language settings, etc., etc. This is handy if your PC crashes and you need to reinstall it and you're logging in with a Microsoft account because it remembers the layout. It remembers a few things about your PC. So it just makes it easier when you do reinstall your system and log in again with your Microsoft account for it to restore all those details and settings, your backgrounds, your layouts, etc. But like I say, if you don't want to share that information with Microsoft and you don't log in with a Microsoft account, then there's really no need to tick that. But if you do log in with a Microsoft account and you don't want that information shared, then tick that box there. I log in with a local account. I don't log in with a Microsoft, so I'm not going to tick that. Disable cloud-based speech recognition. Now, if you don't talk to your PC, then it's OK to disable that. It's not going to break anything. Disable active probing to Microsoft NCSI server. This just 
checks to make sure that you've got an internet connection. You might see sometimes you get a Microsoft Connect page come up if you've lost the internet. This just tries to help you get back onto the internet. So I don't think that's really causing any harm. Opt out of Windows privacy consent. Well, if you did opt out of the Windows privacy consent or opted into it, then you can opt out of it by ticking that box there. Disable Windows feedback collection. Now, if you use the feedback hub, then don't disable that. But if you've never used the feedback hub, then you're OK to disable that. Disable text and handwriting data collection. Well, again, don't really need this. This just passes on information about your handwriting and inking features. So I, I would say tick that. Disable sensors. Uh, disable device sensors. Now, if you've got any sensors in your PC, like for instance, you've got security to help locate your laptop when in the event of loss or theft, then don't disable that because that will stop you from being able to find and locate your laptop. Disable Wi-Fi Sense. Now, there are some occasions where you could go to some buildings and Windows will automatically connect you to their open Wi-Fi hotspot. If you don't want to do this, if you don't want to connect to an open Wi-Fi hotspot automatically, it doesn't connect you to every open Wi-Fi hotspot, but if they've got details on how to log you in, it helps you log in at different Wi-Fi hotspots automatically. But if you never use that or you think to yourself, no, I want to control what Wi-Fi hotspots I'm connecting to, then you can click disable Wi-Fi sense. Disable app launch tracking. That hides the most used apps. So if you rely on the most used apps, then I would leave that unticked. In actual fact, this is I don't think you're sending any information out to Microsoft. It's just leaving those uh, that, 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 that menu on your PC to make it easier to get to your most used apps. Disable website access of language list. Now this basically tells websites that you visit what language your PC is set to so that they can deliver the website in the language that you need. So again, can be handy if you're going to a website, say that's predominantly in German, but it does have an English language part to the website, it may well automatically look at your language list, see that you're English and it will direct you to the English part of the website. Disable automatic map downloads. Now, if you don't use the mapping feature on Windows 10 or Windows 11, then yeah, it's OK to tick that. Disable game screen recording. If you don't play games on your PC, tick it. Disable internet access for Windows DRM, that's digital rights management. So say, for instance, if you've bought a piece of music and it's, digi it's uh, got digital rights management on it, it needs to call out to the server every so often just to make sure that you've still got the rights to be able to play that piece of music or watch that video or use that bit of software. So again, I would say just for safety's sake, leave that unticked. Disable typing and feedback. So it sends typing data to Microsoft about uh, typo, typing errors, typos, things like that. Microsoft don't need to know about that. Tick that box there and disable activity feed feature. Now, the activity feed feature records things that you're doing on your computer, sends them off to your school or workplace and can help you with personalized experiences such as ordering your activities based on the duration of use and relevant suggestions such as anticipating what your needs might be based on your activity history. So again, unless your company demands that, I would say disable it. So and then all you need to do once you've ticked all the boxes that uh, you want is to either download the script or you can copy it and paste it. So uh, let's just do a copy. Let's let's click copy there. And if I click on the start button and then type power uh, and I start to type the word shell straight after, as you'll see, Windows PowerShell comes up. Move your mouse over that, click on the right mouse button. That's the button on the right hand side of the mouse, not the left. Then left click run as administrator. The screen will darken. It will say, do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? Move your mouse over. Yes. Left click once and then you'll get this box come up here and it might say install the latest PowerShell for new features and improvements. But then you'll get this prompt come up, which should say PS C Windows System 32. Click on the right mouse button. That's the button on the right hand side of the mouse, not the left. And then it will start running that script. 
And if the window disappears, just click on this black window down there. And when it's finished running, you should see press any key to continue. So press any key to continue. And there we go. That's done. Now, how do you get this app? That's one thing I haven't told you. Um, it's you can download it or you can just open your browser and go to that address there. That's privacy.sexy, privacy.sexy. And then when you go to that there, you will see the main web page come up just there like that. And you can then go into disable OS data collection and carry on from there. Now, this app does do many other things. These are probably going to be videos for another day. So make sure you've subscribed to my channel so you don't miss out when I do videos on other things. But that will lock down the privacy of your Windows 10 or Windows 11 PC for you. And also what I should have said was, how do you reverse these uh, some of these uh, changes that you've made? Then just click on disable OS data collection. If there's something, for instance, that you do want to revert and there's a revert next to them, then say, for instance, if I disabled location access and I decide I want to revert that change, then I can click on revert. That goes green. I can then once again just copy that script, click on the start button, type in there power shell or one word and then after a few seconds hopefully under best match windows powershell will appear click on the right mouse button then click on the left mouse button over runners administrator and then click on yes when this screen comes up and then when you get the black screen come up wait for the c prompt to appear the c windows system 32 click the right mouse button and that will then reverse those changes I hope you liked this video and if you did consider hitting that thanks button and making a donation to this channel or have a look in the description down below. I've got loads of links down there, a link down there that takes you to my Amazon store, which is all the things that I've loved. I've bought from Amazon in the past all there for you. Or if you're in the market for a new VPN, a Fire TV stick, Fire TV cube or Fire Stick accessories, I've got links down there for those too. Donating, buying or subscribing through the links down below really does help support this channel. It helps me to be able to dedicate more time into researching and bringing you these videos. And don't forget, whilst you're at my YouTube channel, why not stick around? I've got thousands of other videos for you right here, right now, covering all sorts of subjects. Hopefully, whilst you're here, you're going to find something to educate you, entertain you, amuse you, and maybe even save some time and money.